This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 552, The Former Fat Boy Syndrome, part one, by J.C. Dean of jcdfitness.com, and I'm Dr. Neil. Welcome back to another edition of Optimal Health Daily, or welcome for the first time if you're new here. This is the podcast where I act as your very own personal narrator and read to you from some of the most popular health and fitness blogs online. Now, today's post is on the longer side, so when that happens, I read the first half today, and then I'll finish it up for you tomorrow. Now, in a few moments, I'm gonna read to you about JC's story about his struggles with weight. Now, I usually don't weigh myself. I just kind of like to rely on how my clothes are fitting. And so I don't know if I've gained weight recently or what, but one of my buddies came up to me the other day and gave me a belly bump. I don't know if it was my posture, like just the way I was standing at that moment, and I guess it looked like my belly was sticking out or something, but he walked over and said, belly bump. Needless to say, I'm now looking a little bit more carefully at how my clothes are fitting. All right, let's hear part one of JC's story as we optimize your life. The Former Fat Boy Syndrome, part one, by JC Dean of jcdfitness.com. I must admit, I am an FFB, former fat boy. I'm willing to bet many of the folks listening to this were also FFBs. As an FFB, I know we tend to think our metabolisms are subpar, or we can't build muscle efficiently due to our endomorphic proportions. This is what's known as the FFBS, former fat boy syndrome. I say this is bull honky. Nice attempt at swearing, I know. The sad truth is being a former fat boy may be even worse on the psyche than starting out as a skinny kid. My goal today is to reach out to all the FFBs and offer some encouragement, hope, and a swift kick in the butt. What is a former fat boy? An FFB is what the name implies, someone who used to be fat, or they could still be slightly on the chubby side. Think of the big power lifter who eats a bit too much. This is not a blanket statement, as there are always exceptions, but in my experience, many of the bigger, younger guys in the gym have a history of being part of the FFB club. Then again, I see guys that are still chubby and lack any muscular development whatsoever. I grew up eating bologna and cheese sandwiches, I meant to say that, and this is what turned me into a fat boy. Once I got into athletics, I turned into a husky boy and eventually graduated to an FFB. It was an interesting experience to say the least, and I learned a lot from being the fat kid growing up. Now that we know what an FFB is, let's get into the darker corners of the minds of these unique souls. A mess of mental hangups. Since you're listening, I would argue that you're likely interested in changing your body composition for the better, or maybe you're here for some lame humor. You are likely interested in looking great naked and thus being proud of what you have accomplished aesthetically. One of the biggest issues I face when dealing with clients or when helping out on the forums are FFBs who long for a bigger, stronger, leaner physique, but who are not willing to do what it takes to achieve it. Now, this is not because they are uneducated, stupid, or unwilling. It's because they have this innate fear of returning to their former fatty self. These are usually the guys who have worked really hard on a fat loss diet with lots of cardio for many months to drop a ton of weight. They're so excited about losing the extra fluff and now want to build their physique, but their own fear sabotages them from taking the necessary steps to achieve their lofty goals. They first learn they must eat more and gain weight to build muscle. They are so scared of ballooning up that they end up spinning their wheels for months and years before seeing the light or just giving up altogether. The Dreadful Origins An FFB gets on a popular bodybuilding forum, spends lots of time lurking, and learning the fundamentals of building a killer physique. He is equipped with more than enough knowledge to propel him for the time being. He knows he must train sensibly. He even picked up a copy of Starting Strength. He has taken his time to learn about how important adequate protein intake is and ensures he is eating a healthy dose of fruits and veggies daily. He has mapped out his plan and proceeds to track his progress along the way. His plan is bulletproof, and he cannot wait to start. The first few weeks are underway, and he's getting a feel for the movements. He starts to develop a love-hate relationship with delayed onset muscle soreness, or DOMS, and is enjoying the consistent strength gains. He is reluctant to meet his caloric goals daily because he knows eating over maintenance will cause weight gain, but he is committed to remain faithful to his goals. After the fourth week has passed, he is up about five to six pounds, and he is bloated from an outing with friends the night before. He decided to drink a few beers and have some bar food high in sodium, which is possibly responsible for the bloat. 
He hates what he sees in the mirror that morning and he starts to really second guess his previous week's efforts. He has this dreaded fear of becoming who he used to be. Later that day, a decision is made to go on a short diet consisting of only two weeks max. And then he'll go back to his regular training and overfeeding. To be continued. You just listened to part one of the post titled The Former Fat Boy Syndrome by J.C. Dean of jcdfitness.com. It always amazes me how our experiences when we were children and adolescents so influence our later behaviors and how we see ourselves as adults. There's a reason for that. It's called growing up for a reason. There's rapid growth that's occurring. And this not only occurs in our physicality, but in our brains as well. And so that means when we're children and adolescents, experiences can have an imprint in our brains that we then carry as adults. And so I can't tell you how many times I've worked with clients or patients who even after they lose their weight, they see themselves as chubby or fluffy or whatever you wanna call it. Everyone else sees their progress, but for some reason, they can't. When they look in a mirror, they always see their old selves staring back at them. And so as JC shares his story, it's not all that uncommon. What he's experiencing happens to quite a few folks, actually. But let's see how he overcame it. Hear that on tomorrow's episode. Now, really quickly, before I go, if you want to help keep our podcasts alive, we have many different ways you can help, both financial and otherwise. Come check out oldpodcast.com slash support to see how. Anything listed there would be a huge help. And one of the easiest, bestest things you can do for us right now is simply share this episode with someone else. I thank you in advance for doing that. I hope you have a great rest of your Tuesday. I'll be back here tomorrow, as I said, to finish up this post. So I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, And together, we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember, your optimal life awaits.